Hi, everyone. I'm Wiley Blevins. I'm an author and editorial director at Raycraft Books, and I'd like to welcome you back to our Raycraft Read Alouds. Tonight, I have another nonfiction book to read to you. As you already know, I love informational books. When I was a kid, they used to call me an info kid because those are the kind of books I loved more than anything. And tonight's book is about a topic I find really interesting because it's related to one of my favorite foods. I live in New York City and I eat a lot of Chinese and Thai food. And what's one of the main ingredients in that food? Rice. Have you ever wondered how rice was grown and harvested? How it ends up on your, on your dinner plate? Well, this book will share a lot of that information. The author is also the illustrator, Hong Cheng Yu. This is the cover of the book, Rice. And she spent several months in China in a village where they grow rice. And a lot of what you will see are paintings based on the people she met and the things that she saw and learned. So I hope you enjoy Rice by Hong Chang Yu. On the terraces in the beautiful mountains of Yunnan province, local farmers grow rice. After the rains, the terraces are warm and wet. As the cherries blossom, people start preparing to work on the farm. Before planting, farmers have to plow the soil, which has hardened during the winter. They use tools like a plow and rake to soften the earth so that the rice seeds can root easily. New leaves sprout from the trees and animals become active. This is the time that farmers begin to prepare their seeds for sowing. They choose big, strong seeds, soak them in warm water, and leave them in a warm and wet bamboo basket for three to four days until the seeds begin to sprout. The hen and the chicks eat any seeds that have dropped on the ground. The flowers on the pear and peach trees blossom and wilt. Farmers begin to plant the sprouted seeds into flat, soft seed beds. In the warm sunlight, the seedlings will become healthy and strong. It drizzles thick and fast on the pure brightness days. Potatoes start to blossom and a grandma plows and plants her corn. The rice seedlings begin to form their first three leaves. Farmers go to the seedbed regularly to check on their seedlings. By now, there are five to six leaves on the rice seedlings, which makes the seedbed a very crowded place. It's time to take the seedlings out and carry them to the rice paddy. Care has been taken to make sure the paddy has been plowed and the dam reinforced. Take a look at the clouds. It takes a lot of effort to transplant the seedlings, so all the neighbors and relatives come to help. All the seedlings are transplanted securely in rows in the rice paddy. After an entire day of hard work, the transplanting is only finished for one family. They will have to do the same work in their neighbor's field the next morning. Several days later, the hills will be covered with endless greenery. The leaves of the rice plants rustle when the rain whispers to them, little grain, may you prosper and bring everyone a bountiful harvest. As the seedlings adapt to their new environment, they become stronger and stronger. Farm children play on the swing near the field, hoping to drive bad weather and pest problems away as they fly up and down. Small flowers bloom on the ears of rice. There will be two to 300 of these flowers, which will then be pollinated and grow into grains. The plants have to absorb a lot of water for this to happen, which means a strong rain in this hot weather is desperately needed.
The big and heavy ears make the rice stalks bow. To prevent them from falling into the water and drowning during storms, they are bundled up tightly. As the rain stops and the sky becomes clear, sparrows will peck at the rice grains. Scarecrows are placed in the field to scare them away. Now the grains are completely mature. On a sunny day, the family harvests the rice together. The ears of rice are cut with a sickle and then put into a wooden container to be separated. Farmers separate the grains by shaking them inside the container. The rattling sound echoes through the village. Carps, loaches, and finless eels have grown big in the patties. Children catch these fish after the harvest. They make a delicious dinner. In order to preserve the grains of rice, people dry them in the sun. On sunny days, families spread them on flat ground near their homes, turning them over regularly with a special tool to ensure that every grain dries. There are husks on the outside of the rice grains, which must be clean so the rice can be eaten. For many years, farmers used water-powered rollers to mill or husk the grains. Now a machine blows the husks away. At last, they have rice. As the biggest festival in October draws near, every corner of the village is cleaned and the best food is prepared. A banquet is held in the streets to celebrate a bountiful year and to pray for good luck in the coming year. And here is a painting of that festival. This painting really takes my breath away because it looks so real. It looks almost like a photograph. Take a look at all of the smiling faces of the people in the village and how proud they are of the hard work that they have done. If you look down at the bottom near the middle, this little boy in the painting is by far my favorite. I wonder what he is trying to tell us. So if you get a chance to read this book in your library, you'll find a bunch of back matter sections that add additional information, information on the Chinese lunar year and every page in the book, there are additional details that you can learn about rice. Here you see some more of those wonderful details and drawings. And it ends with some information about why we eat rice and all the different kinds of rice. Well, I hope you enjoyed this informational book. Please go to our website at www.raycraftbooks.com where you can see some of our other books and let us know if there are specific ones you want us to read. Please also visit our YouTube channel where you can see readings of other books that we have done. I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I hope to see you back here soon. Goodbye.